Good morning. Today is January the 2nd, the second Sunday after Christmas Day. Welcome to worship in the environment of Ravenshill United Church. Located in a piece of land that has been for thousands of years the territories of the Longhouse Confederacy, Anishinaabe, and Mississauga. We thank the seven nations that signed the Williams Treaties, which allows us to share this land. We acknowledge the First Nations people, their history, spirituality, languages, and culture. Among the Ojibwa, Anishinaabe, and Chippewas, we acknowledge in particular the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation as our close neighbor and friend with whom we learn to live in peace and friendship. Today is the first Sunday of January 2022. Let's celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries for this month. If you know exactly who they are for the celebration, give them a call after the service. Let's sing a song together for them. Announcements. The in-person services in both churches will be suspended until the end of January 2022. Instead, all worship services during that period will continue online as before. We shall start the online coffee meeting again. Please join us on January the 11th and 25th. I shall send out the link for the Zoom meetings a few days before that. Raven Shoes AGM will be held on January 23rd. Please submit your report to the office by January 5th. Let us begin today's worship. Peace be with you, and also with you. Lighting of the Christ Candle The Magi followed a star, leading them to the light of the world. The candle flame reminds us that the light of the world is in our midst. Gathered as people who are drawn to the light, we center ourselves for worship. Call to Worship A star shining brightly in the east, discovered by those who have eyes to see the unusual and the challenging, a journey into unknown territory, taken by those who have courage and curiosity, an encounter with an evil commanding presence, evil that was faced yet resisted with care. The Holy One recognized 
despite humble origin, the glory of the gifts given to God's chosen child. Come, let us worship. Verses United, number 96. Will you come and see the light? Verses 2, 3, and 5. Gathering Prayer God of Life Starlight is our night companion, a gift of wonder that helped direct ancient ones on their journey and helps us reflect upon our own. Amen. Today's responsive scripture is from Psalm number 72. We shall proceed after we hear the refrain. Give the ruler your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal heir, for judging your people rightly and upholding the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring forth peace for the people and the hills prosperity with justice. May your anointed defend the cause of the poor among the people, save the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May your anointed live as long as the sun endures, as long as the moon from age to age. May your anointed be like rain falling upon the grass, like showers that water the earth. May your anointed be one in whose days justice shall flourish and peace abound till the moon is no more. May the rulers of Tashish and the Isles pay tribute. The monarchs of Sheba and Siba bring gifts. May all rulers do homage and all nations render service. For your anointed shall deliver the needy when they cry, the poor and those who have no helper. Your anointed shall have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the poor. From oppression and violence, your anointed shall redeem their life, 
and count as precious their bread. Verses United 330 Jesus shall reign Verses 1, 2, and 4 Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The reader for today is Wayne Butcher. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Pilgrims on the Road What were the pilgrims doing on their journey? Are we also searching for something in our faith journey? Are you a pilgrim, making a long and challenging journey towards a particular place for religious reasons? If you throw this question to the younger generation, you may occasionally hear affirmative replies from them. But most of the time, you might get negative answers. It's not new to state that engaging the younger generation in long-term projects has become more difficult than ever. It seems that they don't have this stamina at all. 
Is it true, though? Is it true that a long and challenging journey is not for everyone, especially the younger generation who might want to see the journey broken down into tiny pieces? Is it true that a trip aiming towards a particular place is not attractive, especially for the younger generation who prefers multitasking and crossovers? Is it true that most people have given up religions and spirituality, and hence there are no more needs to justify anything for any reason? The Magi in the Gospel of Matthew are pilgrims living in the old world, a world that is more than 2,000 years from now. When the Gospel writer reported their appearance in the story we read today, he highlighted several points about them. Firstly, they were unnumbered, unnamed, mysterious, coming from the East. Secondly, they knew how to decipher the secret of the stars. Thirdly, they were on their way to find the newborn king of the Jews, who was not related to them at all. Fourthly, their question frightened Herod the Great and other Jewish religious leaders. Finally, King Herod was almost successful in using them to get to the source of the threat, the newborn king of the Jews. The Magi were the ones who devoted themselves to studying stars and linked their mysteries to the future and human destiny. It's not an unusual practice in the Roman Empire, but it's something the Jewish culture forbade. In our story, they were not just the ones who spent their time with their head, being nerds, but put their body, soul, and mind together, engaged themselves in a dangerous journey following a star. They decided to expose themselves to the dangers of being robbed rejected and killed. They dared to take the risk because they believed the star they were following would lead them to the newborn king of the Jews who had nothing to do with them. But that's their passion. What about Herod the Great? He was a power-hungry person, willing to kill anyone threatening his position, including his wife, sons, and political enemies, or comply to the demands of his political superiors. For example, Antony, Octavian, as long as he could secure his reign. Even though we don't have any historical evidence to confirm that he tried to kill baby Jesus, such a plot matched his personality very well. He was obsessed with power and was willing to be led by it and played the role of a tyrannical ruler. And what about the chief priests and scribes of the people? They were well educated in the Hebrew scripture and Jewish culture. They noticed the most delicate details of all written prophecies. However, they allowed their lifestyles and faith to be dominated by their desire and wish for satisfaction. They were willing to bend over backward to guarantee the continuation of their privileges. Can we call them all pilgrims then, making a long and challenging journey towards a particular place for religious reasons? The chief priests and scribes had a long-term plan built upon maintaining the temple cult as their prime concern and made all possible religious arguments to justify what they were doing. Herod the Great showed his political and religious ambition in his aggressive political actions and the renovation project of the second temple. But we can hardly name them pilgrims when we compare them with the Magi. 
Do you still remember I asked you to throw the question, are you a pilgrim making a long and challenging journey towards a particular place for religious reasons to the younger generation? Most of them would say no, I said. However, they might all be eligible to be pilgrims if they understand the question from a different perspective. Ask them the following questions. How did you come into this world? It's not their choice. What's the meaning of life then? Everyone defines the meaning of life through making choices. Would your life end? Absolutely. Would the meaning of life diminish and finally become meaningless? Again, it's their choice. It depends on what they pick. We are all travelers, making a long journey not entirely of our choice. That journey will finally come to an end, and we are the ones who might shape how that journey looks like. Once, a student went to his meditation instructor and said, My meditation is horrible. I feel so distracted. My legs ache and I constantly fall asleep. It's just horrible. It will pass, said the instructor. A week later, the student came back to the instructor. He said, my meditation is wonderful. I feel so aware, so peaceful and so alive. It's just wonderful. The instructor said again, it will pass. In the journey, some find feedbacks vital since they reinforce and motivate. Why did the chief priests, scribes, and Herod the Great keep doing what they were doing? They must have perceived certain feedbacks more critical than the other. They cared more for what they possessed and what they could exploit further. Their pattern of behavior is more like a tourist than a pilgrim. A pilgrim is a traveler who believes there may exist a mystery greater than one can comprehend, a faith that justifies opening up oneself and searching for meaning in uncertainties. Think about the situations when we feel tired, run out of resources, have no more energy and idea, and yet like to be enlightened. A pilgrim is also willing to confess and repent, to let go of things that prevent one from growing. So, instead of craving like an addict, think about the new ways of doing things and living we admire. A pilgrim is often associated with the figure traveling along on dusty roads and forgetting about the inclusiveness of all encountered. Instead, think about how the social circles would look like if we included different groups of people all the time. A pilgrim dares to travel to that sacred space within the heart where one can find the caves and dark empty spaces, where one can hear the sound of the silent stream. Just think about how you would transform into when light shines into that space and exposes the pride and prejudice, when warmth enters that space and soothes the suppressed and painful past. A pilgrim will celebrate when one's weaknesses in human nature get accepted. Think about a broken bowl, the life cycle of a plant, a human being, a planet, a star or a galaxy. Accept them as they are. There is a joy and happiness that comes with that. Are we pilgrims or tourists? As a tourist, there is no need to believe, grow, love, search the soul and accept what is not acceptable. But as a pilgrim, 
One reserves space for believing, growing, and transforming, being lovable and loving, getting healed from within, and accepting one's vulnerability. The Magi might not consider themselves religious, adventurous, and empathetic, but they were on the right track for further progress. In today's scriptures, they were unnumbered, unnamed, with their origins and background unmentioned. However, they made a good impression on most people. Our younger generation might be in the same situation as them right now, unnumbered, unnamed, unmentioned. They can learn from these pilgrims and benefit from the journey if we offer our explanation mindfully and respectfully. Show them how the Magi traveled as pilgrims and finally got home by taking a different path so that our younger generation might also find their journeys a little scary yet fantastic. Spiritual but not religious should be used to describe anyone who wishes to believe and live in openness to changes, which includes all of us. Nobody should feel lonely on such a journey. Amen. Voices United, number 87. I am the light of the world. Verses 1, 2, and 4. The ministries of the church include hospitality, teaching, outreach, music, and counseling. They will be hard to continue without you. Thank you for your continuous support. We joyously acknowledge that our spiritual blessings are evidence of God's love. There are different ways to show your support. A lot of you have scheduled for par 
or sending your check to the church office by mail. For those who feel comfortable with the modern technology, both CanadaHelps.org or eTransfer would work. You can find the complete information here or you can contact the church office for more details. Prayer of Dedication As the Magi brought gold, so we bring these gifts. As the Magi brought frankincense, so we bring our prayers. As the Magi brought myrrh, so we bring our lives to you, O God. Amen. Prayers of the People If you have prayer requests, please send them to me before the next Sunday service so that I can incorporate them into the prayers here. We we'll respect everyone's privacy. So unless I have your consent to share with others, the privacy concerns will stay with me only. With your permission, we shall send your prayer concerns to the church members by email, and they will not appear in the video. Today's prayers are composed of several sessions. After each session, there will be a moment of silence. You can break the silence by naming the ones who pop up in your mind. You can also hold them in your heart in silence. After the final session, we shall say a response together. Let us pray. God of compassion, we bring our prayers to you for all the precious gifts we receive. Moments of beauty, love from family and friends, food from the earth, encounters that cultivate hope. Receive our gratitude for all this and more. We bring our prayers to you for all those we have concern for. Lives burdened by loss or headache, those struggling with illness or pain, countries devastated by violence or conflict, all those carrying hidden sorrows, grant strength and healing. We bring our prayers to you for all those who, like the Magi, are searching for something. Some for new meaning, some for the right path, some for community, some for your presence. Grant a kind and guiding light. We bring these prayers to you, along with all those who remain unspoken, trusting that you have received them all with mercy and grace. We are both pilgrims who journey and innkeepers who give travelers a place of sanctuary. We keep our hearts open to the transformation of the journey and the transformation of giving warm welcome. Amen. Oh, shines as the song.
Commissioning and Blessing. Let's be joyful and full of hope when we receive the blessing from God. May God be a guiding star before you, a glorious song above you, a gentle path below you, a galvanizing voice behind you wherever you may journey. Amen. Our worship service this morning has come to an end. Remember, you can always reach me by leaving a message in the office or calling me directly. See you all next Sunday.